If you've been following my channel for a while now, you might find this piece to be a little bit familiar. And if you are new to my channel, you might be thinking, what is wrong with the colors of this illustration? Well, today I wanted to revisit the inverse color challenge, which is basically a challenge where you try to create an art piece in inverted colors. And when you invert them, they look, well, a little bit more normal, except I don't. The last time I tried this challenge, I was using watercolors and I felt like the transparency of the medium kind of held me back to really embracing the challenge. So this time around, I'm going to be using Posca pens because they are very opaque. You can use them on both black and white paper. So I think that'll be really interesting. So let's get to it. To sort of connect our previous inverse challenge, I thought it would be really fun to use the characters from our previous drawing. We have our fire witch and her unicorn buddy. So I thought it'd be really fun to maybe illustrate a scene with them in their younger days, maybe when they met. And because Posca pens are opaque, unlike watercolors, I thought it would actually be really fun to do two illustrations. One with a black paper so that when it's inverted, it's a day scene and one with white paper so that inverted it's a night scene. So I think that would be really fun to play around with with Posca pens. So first I wanted to sketch some ideas for these two illustrations. So like I said, I wanted to represent our two illustrations, one in the day, one at night. And I wanted to have our characters meeting for the first time. Maybe where our unicorn and our fire witch are meeting as children for the first time. And then one maybe where the fire witch is experimenting with her fire powers. So let's see, I think it would be really fun to have our characters meeting in the daylight. And then we can have a little bit more of a dramatic scene at night with the girl's powers maybe going crazy. Oh gosh, that's a thick neck. Okay, let's see. There we go. Now it looks more like a donkey, but that's okay. You know, who who's to say what unicorns uh, actually look like? Because they don't exist. And we can have our girl who is young. I feel like I made this a little too tight. I'll probably end up kind of zooming out a little bit because right now it's just all unicorn. I don't even know where I'm going to put the girl. Let's see. She's trying to show the unicorn that she's good by reaching out her backwards hand. Whoops, put the thumb on the wrong side. Oh boy, off to a great start. And I should probably make the unicorn a little bit shorter because as an adult, it looked very long and we've got to make sure that we show that this horse has grown up. Maybe she's actually taking a nap. Give her a big head. Give her a little buck teeth in her very poofy hair consuming her whole head. Okay, I'm thinking I'm thinking I want to go a little bit more dramatic with one of these scenes. I want them to be in a forest. I love drawing forests with my Posca pens. I want the little girl to be having trouble controlling her powers. And maybe this is actually where I bring the unicorn a little bit scared as it finds out about her fire powers. So I can actually maybe move her and her fire over so it's not quite centered and we can have the horse peeking over. Oh gosh, how do I draw? Oh my God, I love that horse. Honestly, it actually might be really cute if they met when they were absolute babies. So maybe she is a hundred percent a baby here. Should I give her a diaper? Very, very rough sketches and layouts, but I do really like this one for our day scene where they meet as babies. And then of course this one as our night scene where we find her growing up and losing control of her powers and the unicorn is shocked. So I think these are gonna be really fun. Of course, very challenging to work in inverted colors. So let's start off with our meeting scene when they're babies in the daylight. Even though this wasn't my first time tackling this challenge, it was, oh boy, it was a challenge. 
Unless you make it a habit to work in inverted colors, you're never going to be able to think super easily, I don't think, in inverted colors. It's such a challenge on its own to think about a piece where the shadows are the lightest part and the white is literally black and black is literally white. That alone felt like it took so much brain power for me to think about and these pieces, these illustrations I create in this video, I'll admit, aren't the most complicated when it comes to my illustrations illustrations, but it just took me so much brain power to take it slowly and think about what colors I was using and make sure that I use the darks where the lights go and the lights where the darks go. So many times I would leave a black area black because I wanted it to be black and I realized I have to make it white. And overall it's just really hard to work on something that is not going to look like what it looks like. Which brings me to the point of inverting the colors. So I thought it'd be really fun to create this little switch that I switched on and off while I created the piece. I don't want to spoil the entire piece before I complete it, but it is really fun to get a little preview as I work on it, especially seeing the colors come together or just seeing the Posca pens in their inverted form is really fun. So I would definitely say the biggest challenge of this challenge is trying to think in opposites because, oh my gosh, it is so hard, but it is so satisfying to scan my art piece at the end of this challenge, put it into Photoshop and invert the colors and just see how normal, I guess it looks. I was seriously shocked by this first piece. This first piece is not the best piece. The best piece is the second piece. So if you're waiting to see the second piece, I would highly recommend it. I was honestly blown away when I saw it inverted. I was just so shocked at how successful it ended up being. I think that's probably the main thing that really draws me to this challenge. It's not about your finished piece or creating a masterpiece, but something as simple as inverting the colors just really blew my mind and I was just so impressed with how it looked inverted. Such a simple, silly thing to get excited about, but it was just so interesting to see how different the piece looked when you inverted the colors. It, it looked like I drew it the way it was supposed to be. I'm a simple person, okay? But when it came to this first piece, I think I was just kind of getting my bearings with the challenge. It has been a couple of years since I last did the challenge and because I am working with a different medium, Posca pens, I didn't have the additional challenge of working around a white paper that was going to be seen through almost no matter how thick I put the paint down. With Posca pens, I had full confidence that if I put white on that black paper, you are going to see white on the black paper. Something else I think that made this challenge a little bit easier when it came to the Posca pens was that Posca pens are limited in color. This was both something that made this challenge easier and also a little bit more difficult. Because I am working with inverted colors, I wasn't going to have the same exact color palette that I would have when the pens weren't inverted, if that makes sense. I had a different range to work with and that meant that there was some colors that were really not the best to use even with a very colorful crazy palette when it came to Posca pens. So although I normally do like to work a little bit more colorful, a little bit more abstract and vibrant with Posca pens, I was also trying to work in a way that was going to be very reminiscent of our previous watercolor illustration. So I wanted to use a very similar color palette and make sure that the characters were still recognizable. Speaking of rec Recognize, I completely forgot to give the baby unicorn it, its horn, so let's pretend that it, it hasn't grown its horn yet. So I did do a lot of mixing colors together with the pens and using a brush, especially when it came to applying just a little bit of black or I guess white line art on this piece. I do like to work lineless with Posca pens, but sometimes I do like to throw a little bit of line art in there just to bring it all together. So I felt like this piece just needed a few areas to be line arted, but for the most part, that is that for our first illustration, our day scene. Let's move on to our night scene.
The night scene was both the piece I was most excited to work on and also the most nervous to work on for a couple of reasons. I was most excited about it because I felt like it was going to be the best comparison towards my watercolor inverted color challenge. I previously used a white piece of paper and I think a lot of the elements were going to be the same when it came to the characters. So I was just really interested to see the direct comparison between the Posca pens and the watercolor. I knew the Posca pens were going to work a lot better because like I mentioned, they were much more opaque and watercolor obviously much more transparent, which made it a lot harder to work with. But I think I was just also really interested to see how the whole mood of this illustration was going to come through. Because I was really embracing the fact that our white paper was going to turn dark and I wanted to create this really moody, intense night scene, I knew that was at least going to work in my advantage, but I just... This challenge scares me. Have I mentioned that? It was also really tricky to have to swap the way I thought about darks and lights. So in the previous illustration, I just left our horse character black because the paper was black and our horse was going to be white. But in this illustration, I had to paint our horse black to make it white, which then made me very nervous about mixing things like the lime green into its ears and nose to make that really soft pink look. I wasn't really sure how well that was going to mix into the black paint, but it actually worked out perfectly. In in fact, I am just so impressed with how this illustration at all turned out so amazing. I almost feel like this is a very interesting way to work on illustrations if you want them to be a little bit more dark. If you do want that dark black base to be the night sky and you don't want to have to worry about layering black paint, this is the perfect way to go about it. Just create your illustration, scan it, invert it, and there you go. Or I guess you could also just create a digital illustration where you don't have to worry about layering things and um, problem solved. Like I mentioned before, the biggest challenge of this, well, challenge, was trying to think in both inverted colors, but also trying to think as you would when creating a normal illustration. For example, there's just a lot of little details here and there that I would have added if this were a normal illustration because I just couldn't wrap my head around the highlights and the way the darks and lights were reversed. A small detail that at the end of this illustration I wish that I would have added would be a glow from the fire. So fire creates light, which creates this nice warm glow on objects around it. So just creating a few spots of red glow on the grass, maybe the horse, some of the trees was something that I wish I had added, but just couldn't wrap my brain around it even existing in the inverted world. I think the white paper being inverted to black really added to this illustration, which was just so unexpected. The way the inverted blues really pop off of the black page when inverted into yellow is just... Something about it is very satisfying. I think this whole illustration has a very orange and blue complement feel to it, which works really well. But overall, I think I was actually pretty successful at creating this very dark, ominous mood to this illustration. We have our fire witch girl growing up, learning how to control her fire powers, maybe throwing a tantrum, burning a forest down around her, and overall just being kind of destructive. I guess I never mentioned the gradient in the background. I wanted to create this glow from maybe the forest burning down in the background. So I have this blue to green to white gradient in the background that created this very lovely orange to red to black glow when inverted. And I was just so shocked at how well that worked. And overall, I was just very pleased with this piece. And that is that for part two of the inverse color challenge. I had a lot of fun just comparing the two different mediums, especially when it came to contrast. I think Posca pens are just really fun to play around with. And overall, it was a fun time. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And of course, a huge thank you to all of my patrons for their continuous support. You guys are seriously amazing. If you want early access to my videos, secret sketches, and coloring pages, check out the link to my patron in the description below. Thank you guys all so, so much for the support. Stay golden. Bye.